So when I was a little girl, I always wanted to be a saint because I thought being a saint meant loving him the most, loving him as much as possible. One of the things that really brought me close to God was and is suffering. I have always had health challenges, but my first neurosurgery was at four years old when we realized I had this problem called Chiari malformation, where there's not enough room in the back of the brain. So the brain herniates down into the spinal column and causes all different kinds of issues that really dramatically can affect day-to-day -day life. I, I wanted to serve so much. I wanted to give God everything, but I was physically capable of so little. There was so little that I could do. So I had to ask the question of God, how can I serve you in the midst of this? I just prayed that God would make me better so that I could serve people better, so that I could love people. When I was young, I loved being outside. There's something so incredible about being immersed in, in the beauty that God's created. When I was recovering from that first neurosurgery and even later on at various times, I wasn't always able to go out and, you know, and play and climb trees and do those things. So I, I started drawing them. That was something I could do in bed. When I couldn't do anything else, I could be with Jesus or I could paint or both. <laughs> and so I just started drawing and fell in love with it. It taught me to look for the beautiful things around me. By the time I hit high school, I was passing out all the time, often is once a week at its worst. I would wake up after passing out and I couldn't do anything. I couldn't even, you know, speak to say, thank you so much for taking care of me. Thank you for loving me so well. And so I would just smile. I had a girl in, in one of my classes that I didn't know particularly well, but she came up to me one day and she pulled me aside and started telling me about all the really challenging things she was going through. She had seen me being carried out after passing out. And she said, you were smiling. And she said, and I thought, if you can smile through that, then I can keep going. I started doing better sometime after high school and was able to go off to college. All through college, I had planned on working in a children's hospital. I'd been in so many and I wanted to give back and there's a children's hospital over in Jacksonville. I volunteered there and we would do art with the kids and it was such a gift. And I thought to myself, this is how I can serve God. I can use art and I can help kids in the hospital. This is the best way I could possibly serve him. But about midway through my senior year, I started having some significant issues again. And I found out I needed several more neurosurgeries. And so suddenly all those plans in my mind of what I thought the best way to serve God was, they were falling apart. During that time, I realized that all I could do was love as much as possible in the present moment, that that was how I could serve God, that I might not be able to serve kids in the hospital, but I could love the nurses, that I could be kind to them, I could say thank you to the people who bring my food in, to the people who would clean my room while I was staying in the hospital, just putting as much love as possible into those moments, into those interactions. In and through this whole journey, God's taught me that the circumstances of our life don't matter nearly as much as how we live them, as how much love we put into whatever those circumstances are. Not everyone's going to have neurosurgeries or the health challenges that I do, but you all have something that feels like obstacles to love. You all have challenges, you all have hardships, we all have sufferings, we all have our cross that Jesus invites us to carry. Whatever the obstacle, whatever the challenge is in your life, it's not a limitation to loving God. It's the very thing which God can use so that you can love and serve Him and others. The gift that it is to carry a cross is something really remarkable because that's the life of Jesus. And in some small way, we get to take part of that. We get to try and love like Him.